Jim Crow Joe Biden goes into the pulpit of Emmanuel, Mother Emanuel Church, lies about how the Democratic Party is going to help black people, lies about the civil rights movement, lies about everything. We're going to break it down for you today on the Vince Everett Ellison Show. All right, let's get this thing started. And the nerve of these Democrats, the nerve of these Democrats. I turn on the TV and guess what I see? I see Jim Crow Joe Biden, the president of the United States of America, in the pulpit of a black church. Yeah, Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina where nine people were murdered by white supremacists. He goes there because he finds out that he's in trouble with the black vote and he needs to galvanize the black vote. So what does he do? Well, I thought the Democrats believed in separating church and state. They don't want the church involved in politics. They hate evangelicals. Oh no, but when it comes down to the black church, that does not exist. So what does Jim Crow Joe get up there and do? Well, he gets up there and he lies. First of all, he wants to tell you about how the Democratic Party and the Civil Rights Movement helped the black community. First, let it be understood that the Democratic Party down south hated the civil rights. They hated civil rights. Matter of fact, every one of the Democrats, save one in the U.S. Senate down south, voted against the Civil Rights Act. Every last one of them except Ralph Yarborough. Of all of the 11 Confederate states, 22 senators, 21 voted against the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, all except Ralph Yarborough in Texas. Yes, that's true. So Joe lied about that. Then he gets up there and he talks about how good the Democrats have been to black folks. Oh, down south, how good they've been. Well, he didn't tell you that the Democratic Party was a part of the Ku Klux Klan. Yes, the Democratic Party started the Ku Klux Klan. They started in Pulaski, Tennessee. Nathan Bedford Forrest, the Confederate general, helped start the Ku Klux Klan, and their job was to keep black people in their place. And for 100 years, they, made, they raped and they murdered people in the black community. Yes, 100 years of Jim Crow, and the Democratic Party was a party behind Jim Crow. There was a party behind Slavery from 1860, well, 1800 to 1860, they were the party behind the Confederacy from 1860 to 1865. Yes, it was the Democrat Party. But Joe Biden wants to tell you how good the Democratic Party has been to you. Go to any city. You remember John F. Kennedy went to the Berlin Wall and he said, people who want to talk about how great communism is, what I tell you, if you think communism is great, let them come to Berlin. Well, I tell you, if you think the Democratic Party is great, and if you think the Democratic Party has been great to black people, yeah, let them come to Detroit. Let them come to Memphis. Let them come to Chicago. Let them come to New York. Let them come to Seattle, Portland, Oakland. Anywhere they rule. All you see are the worst schools, the worst neighborhoods, violence. All they do is meditate on blood. And the entire black caucus, a bunch of black politicians, all of them, they rule over ghettos and slums. Oh, but they're on top. So Joe Biden goes into the black church and does what Joe Biden does. He lies. Talking about the civil rights movement and how they did this and that and all that and that for the civil rights movement. No, they didn't. The black community was much better before the civil rights movement. Oh, you don't believe it? Before 1940 and 1960, the black community cut its poverty rate from 80% to 30% in 20 years. It was the greatest reduction of poverty in the history of the world, all without the civil rights movement. Jackie Robinson integrated baseball without a march. Football, basketball was integrated without a march. Jesse Owens went to, went, went, went to Berlin and defeated Hitler and the Nazis winning four gold medals without a march. Joe Lewis knocked out Max Smelling. Muhammad Ali became heavyweight champion of the world. Floyd Patterson and Joe, uh, 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 Joe Lewis, all of them, without a march. 
The black colleges, HBCUs, were going well without a march. James Meredith told me that our public educational system in the black community was the best public educational system in the world without a march. Black family was together. 80% of black children being born in two-parent families. Black men going to prison didn't even exist. Crime didn't exist. Dope, fighting, hell raising, smoking blunts, drinking 40s, watching Jerry Springer didn't exist. Then all of a sudden, here comes the civil rights movement. Bunch of Marxists, bunch of weirdos, bunch of idiots, bunch of jack leg, no good preachers that all want to be famous and get paid. Yeah, they took the black church and they turned it over to the Marxist who then took over the Democratic Party and turned the black church over to the Democratic Party. But the black church has always been part of the Democratic Party. And let's make one thing perfectly clear. There is no black church. There is no white church. There is no red church. There's only one church. And that is the church of Jesus Christ. So you want to talk about the black community. Yeah, you look at the black community before 1960. You go up to Detroit when it was the richest city in the world. In the world. As the civil rights movement, it went bankrupt. Go to Harlem. The Harlem Renaissance. I was told by this very nice white lady that back in the 50s and 60s, white people used to get up in the morning time just to go to Harlem to watch black folks go to church. That's how beautiful we were. We were called the beautiful people. Now you go out to Harlem at night, you better have a gun. Yeah, man. Go to Memphis now. Used to be a time you go on Bill Street, have a good time. Black folks just having a great time. Oh, not no more. Mm-mm. But he wants to talk about how good the Democrats have been to black people. That's your Biden. But this is not all Jim Crow Joe did and the Democrats talking about now. Today, in the newspaper, I'm reading the newspaper, that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are telling everybody that they are going to run on abortion access. That is going to be the pinnacle part of their campaign. So this is going to be Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's motto for the campaign, their slogan. We want to help you kill your children. We don't want to help you feed them. We want to help you kill them. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris believes in abortion up to the ninth month from inception until a second before the child is born. There are some Democrats, my ex-governor in Virginia, Ralph Northam, who believe that they should abort it even after they are born. He said that if the baby is born, take them, make them uh, very comfortable, and then have, the, have a conversation with the parent and decide if you want to kill it. That's what Ralph Northam said. He's a pediatrician. Yeah, he said it. That's what they believe. So Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are saying they want no restrictions on abortion, and they want federal money to kill these children. Tell me something. Now that you know this, now that you know that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party are behind the murder of children, if you vote for them, don't you think you're going to be complicit in that murder? Let me give you an example. Guy comes up to me, knocks on my door, says, Vince, yeah, man, what's up? I want you 45. Why? I'm going to go across the street and I'm going to kill Sam. I said, you going to kill him? I'm going to blow his brains out. Give me a 45. I give it to him. He go kill Sam. Bam. When the police come and say, where'd you get the gun? He going to say, I got it from Vince. Police going to come over to my house, knock on my door. Vince, did you give uh, John that 45? Yeah. Do you know he's going to kill Sam with it? Yes, I did. You complicit in murder. What? Yeah, you complicit in murder because he told you he was going to use your gun to kill him and you gave it to him. Joe Biden gets up there, says, yeah, black man, I want to kill children. If you vote for me, I'm going to use federal money to kill every child I can find in the womb. You look at him and say, you sure enough going to kill him? I'm going to kill every last one of them. And then you vote for him. And Joe Biden does what Democrats always do, 
and that is murder one million children a year in the womb. When you die and you go stand before Jesus Christ, he gonna look at you and say, hey man, yeah, did you know that Joe Biden, did you vote for Joe Biden? Yeah, I voted for him. Did you know when you voted for him that he was gonna murder those children? Yeah, I knew he was gonna murder them. And you still voted for it? Yes, I did. You're complicit in murder too. How can you not be? Think about that. You think about right now if you're willing to go to hell for Joe Biden and the Democrat Party. Because any man that will vote for a man knowing that he was going to kill children is putting his soul at hazard. If you don't believe me, you ask a Nazi. The ones that knew that Adolf Hitler was going to use the German government to murder Jews. And they voted for him anyway. You see what happened to their country? How it was left desolate and destroyed? Why do you think the black community is in such bad shape right now? We're teaching our children right now that life is cheap. You wonder why we're killing each other in the streets? Of course. Why? Because we're telling them you can kill them in the womb. Well, why can't I kill them in the streets if I can kill them in the womb? Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, we want to help you kill your children. We haven't killed enough. We've killed 65 million. Yeah, there have been 65 million abortions since 1972. They've killed so many Americans that right now, our birth rate, we should be 2.1 if you're going to keep the population where it is, is at 1.6. That is a death spiral. No country has ever come back from it. We are dying as a nation. And the Democrat Party says, full speed ahead. They want to take your children and transition them and turn them in, on, in, on, into the LGBTQ lifestyle. My generation, less than 1%, consider themselves the LGBTQ. Gen X is 25%. None of, those none of those children are going to have children. How can you have children when you're involved in homosexual activity? And so we're going to continue to die. And what does the Democrat Party say? Full speed ahead. You know why? Because they're a death cult. So Joe Biden, with his hands dripping with blood, goes into Mother Manual Church and try to use God's pulpit to fool black folks, ignorant black people in that congregation. Jim Clyburn was there. Another Jim Crow Jim. Black preachers were all there. Applauding a man that has been in Washington, D.C. since the early 1970s, I think since 1972-74 who's always voted to murder children. What is evil? I'll make it easy for you. Evil is anyone who intentionally harms a child. Jesus Christ, the greatest human being that ever lived, said that if anybody harms one of these little ones, it's better that a millstone be tied around your neck and you'll be thrown into the sea. Well, I hope Joe Biden and these Democrats can swim. Because the millstone is ready for them. They want to talk about what they've done for black people. Before the civil rights movement. Before this great statistic that I read in Forbes magazine. It says before 1905, Tuskegee Institute, yeah, the little college down in Tuskegee, Alabama, started by Booker T. Washington. Tuskegee Institute had made more self-made millionaires than Harvard, Yale, and Princeton combined. Tuskegee had done that. Nevertheless, the Marxists in the Civil Rights Movement told us that our public educational system wasn't good enough for us. Israel was producing scholars it was producing all of these men that had businesses and the doctors and the lawyers. Martin Luther King Jr., Jesse Jackson, my father, all of them came out of that educational system. And now what did they decide to do with my generation? They said, we want to turn you over to the very same people who said they hate us. We want to turn, we want to turn our children over to the Ku Klux Klan to educate. We want to turn our children over to white Democrats to educate. And what did they do? Malcolm X said, there's no bigger fool in the world than a man that'll give his 
enemy, his children over to his enemy to educate. And that's exactly what black preachers, the black politicians, and the black civil rights organizations wanted to do. Send us to the Ku Klux Klan to educate. And what have they done? Well, you've seen them. Look out any window and you'll see what's going on. The whole black community is turned to a dystopia. Everybody that lives in it wants to get out of it. The rappers and all of them talk about how they live in hell. They say that rap music and gangster rap music should be listened to because it's a reflection of what they see every day. If that is what they see every day, that is a shame. I saw a little bit of it, y'all, because I worked in a prison when I was a younger man back in the 1990s. I worked at the correct, uh, Kirkland Correctional Institution in Columbia, South Carolina. It was a maximum security prison. And I saw so much waste there. I saw so many young men. My job was to supervise 126 hardcore felons every day. These felons were all classified. They were gammas, betas, and alphas. And the alphas is exactly what they were. They believed that if you put all the, 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 the most dangerous inmates in a dormitory together, they'd cancel each other out. They couldn't um, take advantage of each other because they were all crazy. They were all violent. Well, I was put into this high alpha dorm alone for five years. And my job was security, custody, and control of 126 of those crazy jokers every day. And I did my job well. But I learned from these guys. I learned that many of them were geniuses. I learned that all of them was, a lot of them were smart. I learned that if I did not have a good, strong father, I would have ended up exactly where these young men were. And the civil rights movement destroyed the black family. I'll tell you a quick story. Patrick Moynihan saw that welfare was destroying the black family. What did he see? He wrote it in the Moynihan Report. He said that black male unemployment was going up, but for some reason, black women were not getting married when they got pregnant. He found out that these black women were getting on welfare and they were marrying the government and didn't want to marry the man. So Moynihan went to LBJ and said, Lyndon Baines Johnson, this trend is going to destroy the black community. We have, and we're at a tipping point. We got a small amount of time to save it and stop it. Lyndon Johnson said, hey, tell you what you do. Go to the civil rights community. Go to Martin Luther King Jr., go to NAACP and talk to them about it. If they sign off on it, I'll do it. So Moynihan said, we need to take the, all the power of the federal government to put the black father back in charge of his family. LBJ said, go down there and talk him into it. Well, McGeorge Bundy was over the Ford Foundation. And he said, we're having a retreat for Martin Luther King and the civil rights community. We're paying for it. Go with me down there and tell them about this and we'll get this thing rolling. Moynihan, me, George Bundy, goes down to this retreat. In his book, Bearing the Cross, David Garrow writes about this meeting. David Garrow said that Moynihan came in there, showed them what he had found, and he said it was a wonder Moynihan got out of that room alive. He said they cussed him out, called him a racist, told him that da 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 da. The feminist in the movement said that um, that uh, a marriage was like slavery, and that if they were going to use federal money for anything, it wasn't going to be to put the black man back in charge of the family, but it was going to be to put the black woman in charge of the family. So they went to the White House and they lobbied LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, to instead of using welfare to put the black man back in charge of the family, they said we're going to use welfare to kick him out. And they put the man in house clause in welfare. And it said that if a man was in the house, the woman could get no help from the federal government. And in one generation, the black community would have 80% of its children born in, in wedlock to 80% being born out of wedlock. And Martin Luther King Jr.'s hands were all over it. Yeah, Martin Luther King Jr. was the first recipient of the Margaret Sanger Award. Who was Margaret Sanger? Margaret Sanger was the one that started Planned Parenthood. Had a little side gig called the Negro Project. Her goal with the Negro Project was to kill every black baby in America. 
So she went and got, you know, that that old stalwart that they always use, the black preacher, to help her set up abortion clinics in the black community and then send black girls who got pregnant to the clinic to abort their children and they got paid. Of course they got paid. Well, Martin Luther King Jr. did such a good job for old Margaret Sanger that in 1966, he was the first recipient of the Margaret Sanger Award. Didn't know that about Dr. King, did you? You didn't know that he helped Margaret Sanger kill black children. Well, he did. I know you don't believe me. Look it up. Nancy Pelosi got the Margaret Sanger Award. Hillary Clinton got the Margaret Sanger Award. Now Joe Biden and Kamala Harris is making the murder of children a pinnacle part of their campaign. And they're telling you about it. In the pulpits, in the streets, on the newspaper, and on the news. You know they're going to do it. So when you sit there and vote for them, well, you might as well just go ahead and take a match and put on some gasoline drawers and light yourself up because you're sending your soul to hell. You're complicit in murder. There ain't no way around it. And now I'm warning you. Don't you vote for these people. Do not vote for these people because they are telling you they are going to murder people. Do not vote for them. Y'all, we are in a tough situation here. We're dealing with the cruelest, most vicious, evilest institution in the history of the world. Oh, they talk about systemic racism. Well, they're right. It is systemic racism in the black community. You know why? why? You know why? Because the Democrat runs all the systems. They run the educational system, don't they? They run the police. They run the sheriff's departments in the black community. Yeah. The city councils. They destroyed the family. They're the ones that allow the people going to do the snatch and grab so you can have so you have food deserts and you can have no economy inside the community. They're the ones that want to defund the police. So you have no law and order. They're the ones that allow the illegals to come in with the fentanyl and the drugs. If that is systemic racism in the black community, it is run by the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party has always ran all the systems in the black community. The Republicans don't run anything. If the Republicans ran the schools, you'd have school choice. If the Republicans had control of the family, everybody would be married. If the Republicans had control of the community, everybody would have a gun in their house and they could blow the brains out of anybody that came in their yard trying to sell dope. If the Republicans ran the black community, there would be no fentanyl, there'd be no illegals because they don't believe we don't believe in sanctuary cities. Don't believe in it. No, the Republicans ain't in charge. If the Republicans were in charge, the police would be nice. They'd be courteous. They'd be yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, because you're not going to look at a Republican and call him out of his name because he's probably got a gun on his hip and his wife probably got a gun on her hip and they vote. So when you start talking about systemic racism, Yeah, there's systemic racism in the black community. And it's all ran by the people that run the systems in the black community. And that's the Democrat Party. When you talk about white privilege, yeah, it's a privilege to be white. But it's also a privilege to be black. Say, white people got privilege? Hell, I got privilege. You want white folks to give up their privilege? They say no. And I'm not going to give up my privilege either. either. What was my privilege? I was born with great parents. Two great parents. Got a great family. I was born in the greatest country in the world, United States of America. My greatest friend of all is I'm an heir of Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God. And I'm not giving up one of my privileges for anybody. I'm a white privilege. Yeah, it's white privilege. It's also a privilege to be black. It's a privilege to be Asian. It's a privilege to be Jewish. It's a privilege to be Hispanic. It's a privilege to be alive. 
Stop worrying about somebody else's privilege and worry about your own. Joe Biden got the nerve talking about white supremacy. The biggest problem we got in America today is white supremacy. The white supremacy. And black people started cheering. White supremacy. White supremacy. And black people started cheering. Well, see, that's ridiculous. You know why? Because I've never met a white man superior to me. If you know one, point him out to me. We'll put that to the test. We walking around here talking about white supremacy. White supremacy. White supremacy is like voodoo. It only works if you believe in it. If you don't believe in it, it has no power over you whatsoever. We want equality. We want equality. We want equality. Equality to who? Who you only equal to? I was riding down the road the other day with my daughter. Pointed to this car. This dude in the car, Confederate flag, he got a Confederate hat on. Car just as ragged as it's going to be. Looked like he hadn't been to the dentist in his life. He looked raggedy, looked like he was an alcoholic, looked like he's a chain smoker. I turned and looked at my daughter and I said, that's who they tell me I need to be equal to. They want me to be equal to that. They want me to run around here and say that I need to be equal to that. It is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life for somebody like Joe Biden to get up there and start talking about white supremacy, that white people have some type of supremacy, and black people start saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me make this very, very plain to everyone that's listening. No one has any supremacy over me. No black man, no white man, no red man. You know why? Because I'm an heir of Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God. We all have gifts. We are all brothers and sisters and God gave us all talents. What is our job in our society? To help elevate each other's gifts. If you're a good HVAC man, if you're a good transmission man, if you're a good cook, if you're a good uh, the landscaper, if you're a good doctor, if you're a good lawyer, good teacher, we're all supposed to elevate each other's gifts. And when we elevate each other's gifts, we all benefit. You don't want to take your car to a mechanic and the guy can't fix it. You don't want to go to a doctor and he don't know what's wrong with you. You don't want to go to, to, a, to, a, to a restaurant and you spit the food out because it's nasty. We're supposed to help each other find each other's gifts. And when you find each other's gifts, the world is a beautiful place. Oh, no, but not Jim Crow, Joe, and the Democrats. They want you to be angry. They want you to be mad at each other. They don't want admiration. They want envy. They don't want forgiveness. They want reparations. They don't want love. They want no justice, no peace. They don't want forbearance. They want revenge. They don't want to convince you. They want coercion. In the book of Corinthians, one of the 11 types of people who want to enter into the kingdom of heaven is the extortioner. Who is the extortioner? A person that used threats, boycotts, sit-ins, government, the gun, to get what they want. When Jesus Christ said you're supposed to change the heart, that's how you're supposed to change people. We all know what a stalker is. They got laws against them. Man wants to be with a girl. She don't want him. I'm going to make you be with me. Looking in the window. Falling behind her. She had to put a restraining order on him to keep him off of her. He's looked upon with pity. Rejection. Something's wrong with it. That's exactly what the civil rights movement and Martin Luther King Jr. turned us into, a generation of stalkers. And this is why it failed. He used tool of the devil, extortion, stalking, begging, 
crying to get what he wanted. The result, black people at the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America. But times are changing, y'all. And there's an amazing thing happening in America right now. We are the descendants of the people that came over on the Middle Passage, a passage that killed 80% of the people that were captured in Africa. Only about 20% made it over here alive. We are the descendants of Europeans who said, I'm going to give my last dime and I'm going to spend three months to four months going across an ocean and arrive on the shores of a nation whose language I don't even know and have to fight the natives that live here and have to cut a living out of a wilderness. And I can't go back home if I don't make it. This is where I'm going to die. I'm going to have to go and walk 3,000 miles across America to the Oregon, to, to the, on the Oregon Trail. I'm going to go and get, get, and get 150 acres of land on the Homestead Act and have to fight Indians over there to survive. I'm going to have to go and I'm going to have to hold, a whole, whole uh, 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 150 acres of land and plant wheat and plant corn. And if my crop fails, I die. We are these people's descendants. We're the descendants of the people that beat the British Empire in the American Revolution that destroyed the Confederacy in the Civil War. That freed Europe twice with World War I and World War II. Defeated communism. We are the American people. The Democratic Party wants to turn us into a communist enclave. An atheist, Marxist, Generations of beggars, effeminate, genderless, godless, a beast. We say no. I know who I am. I'm my father's son. I'm an heir of Jesus Christ. I am an American. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, the Democrat Party, you're already defeated. And I think you know it. Come see me again next week on the Vince Everett Ellison Show. And God bless you all.